Hey everyone, my name is Silvio Perez and I'm an application engineer here at Hopgrid Systems. In today's video, I'll be showing you how we can create the pack and go file and various capabilities that are available within that tool. Pack and go is one of those simple tools that offer a great deal of help when trying to send out or make a copy of a drawing or assembly file. Because assemblies and drawings reference parts and subassemblies, simply sending out the individual file is not going to be sufficient. So let's see how this works. Uh, if we take a look at a drawing, all we need to do is go into a file, pack and go, and we get presented with this dialog here. And you see that it this drawing is referencing sub-assemblies and the actual in, uh, parts that are associated within that uh, assembly file. So we have the option to exclude or include whatever we want within this package. And then once we're okay with that, we can save that to a specific folder on our drive or save it to a specific zip file. And what we can do with that zip file is then send it off to another user where they can unzip it on their system and be able to open up these drawings or assembly files without having any file reference issues. If we take a look at an assembly file, the process is going to look the same way. Uh, you see that obviously this assembly consists of individual parts. Uh, so we can go into file, pack and go, and we get the same dialog box. But now what we can do uh, within an assembly is that we can include that drawing file within this uh, menu as well. So if we in include the drawing file, it's going to include all the drawings that are using that assembly and those individual parts files. So we don't have to open up the drawing in itself and in create the pack and go within that. So we can do it all in one shot by including that drawing. What's really nice about this is that if you ran a simulation study within this file, uh, you can actually include the simulation results. And you see that it's indicated here by that CWR file. Uh, what's new within 2015 is that we can now include the flow simulation results as well. What's really nice about that is that when the end user opens up that pack and go folder uh, and they turn on their simulation, the setup is always going to be saved within the file, but now they don't have to rerun the assembly or rerun the study because the results are already going to be included. Uh, even though that's a pretty convenient thing to add within the pack and go, uh, I would reconsider that in terms of depending on how complex the, the model is or how complex the study is, that could generate a very large folder size where it may be a little bit difficult to transfer over and you know take a little time to unzip just because there's a lot of information packaged within that folder. Lastly, we can include uh, an extra level of detail in terms of making sure everything is included within this pack and go. For instance, we can include the toolbox components. So if your assembly includes these toolbox components that are available to you if you have SOLIDWORKS Professional and above, uh, you can ensure that those parts are going to be included without having any file reference issue or if the end user may not have the toolbox module. This package will include those components they'll be able to open up that assembly without any issue. And if your assembly or your parts have specific decals or unique appearances that are unique to your system, those can be transferred over as well by selecting this option here. Let's say you were using the pack and go because you wanted to have multiple versions of the same model so it can be evaluated by your boss or whoever it may be and you want to specify revision numbers. You want to keep track of all the different revisions that you've sent out. Well, what's pretty convenient is that we can add a prefix or a suffix to our file names by just simply putting whatever we need. You know, rev01, and you see that once we accept that, it's going to change the name highlighted there in green saying that there is a change. Uh, we can add, you know, whatever we like to our, to our revision. Uh, you see that it, it updates it in that manner as well. If we had multiple files that have the same name, we can use this handy select replace tool. And what we can do is we can select this option replace text with, and we can search for that file name. Let's say I want to replace every file that had the same uh, file name of that number. And you see that we can then replace that with, you know, whatever we want, one, two, three. And when we say replace all, notice in the background those two files were replaced with that new name. So it's a pretty convenient tool to rename those files. Or we can actually click inside that file 
and rename that uniquely uh, within this menu as well. So we have a lot of control in terms of what these new revisions are going to be called by simply utilizing the select replace, select replace or clicking into the actual window itself. Similarly to clicking in the save the name option, we even have the option to change the location of where these files are going to be located. For whatever reason, if you wanted these individual assemblies or parts to be saved in a unique file or a unique folder, we can double click within that and browse to the location that we want to save it to. So in the situation where we want to package up the file, but the assembly or the drawing file might be really large and right, it may take a long time to actually load up. And it may not be the best use of your time to wait until that file loads up to just create the pack and go. So what we can actually do uh, is navigate through our Windows Explorer and create the pack and go in that manner. So if I navigate to my Windows Explorer, you see that I went into the actual folder location where I included that, that drawing file. What I can do is right click and you see that I have this option to select SOLIDWORKS and expands to more options here such as pack and go. So if I have the uh, SOLIDWORKS closed and the file not loaded, we can navigate to that folder and that file set and create the pack and go and you see that it generates the same module where we can include you know, those simulation results, include those drawings and the same capability what I just presented to you earlier. Again, Pack and Go is one of those great ways to ensure that all the associated files are still linked to the assemblies and drawings without having any association issued uh, to the original file set. It's a great tool to package up the files and be able to send them off for review. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.